watching. How did I forget to say thanks for watching? Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I'm going to wrap up the rest of my January reading, which while there wasn't a lot of it, the quality, just so many great books, including my first five-star read of the year. I, some years it goes six months before I have a five-star read, so that's pretty amazing. And then after that, I'm going to talk about what I'm currently reading and what I have coming up here. Ooh, I just shook the whole desk in February. The first book I have is also the first book of literary fiction, quote-unquote, that I have read in quite a while. It's Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan. I read her debut, which was called Love Marriage, closer to when it came out, which was something like eight years ago now. Liked it a bunch. It was nominated for the Women's Prize and due to a whole bunch of things that happened including some disability in her own life it took that long to get this book out and I'm glad it's here. The novel reads like a memoir and we're following Sashi who is Tamil living in northern Sri Lanka and coming of age just as the Sri Lankan Shri Civil War gets started. So perhaps she's like 15 or 16 when there's the Black July riots of 1983 and we see what it's like to be in that place at that time to have some of your family members joining the Tamil Tigers to be worrying about your friends or your uh, relatives in the next town over wondering if they got caught up in the awful things that have been happening. She is studying to become a doctor and um, to pass her exams to get into university, succeeds, and we watch how she uses her medical skill, sort of, kind of, in this war. And I have had a lot of thoughts about this because it has been so long since I've read literary fiction I kind of forgot it's not that I forgot how to rate it, but I don't have any recent touch points or like benchmarks to compare it against. So I feel like I'm just kind of floating out here saying how much I like it. The language is, it's not overly flowery. It's not like sentences will grab you just because the sentence itself is beautiful. But what makes it literary for me is how she expresses these insights, revelations about a person's character, or more often about life in general and people in general, and how that could hit you. And the themes running through this are so interesting to me and are often separated. It's not just, you know, war themes, which would have been so easy to do. But the idea of when do you tell somebody something? Uh, bad news, for example. Uh, how do you decide when is the right time, if there's ever a right time? Is it easier to protect them from that knowledge or to say it? Thinking about what women do in war and how the men seem to be all happy to like go out there and kill people and get credit, but women will work behind the scenes collaboratively together in order to fulfill their aims without seeking that credit and how much power that has. Medicine in general, and there's never discussion about withholding care because somebody's an enemy or something like that, but where do you spend your time? She's a medical student. Does she spend all of her time in school or does she try and help people outside of it who are being affected in one way or another by this war, whether by directly participating in it or um, being a casualty of it? and all of these things. I know that if, if, I almost want to say when, because I'm very tempted to reread this maybe five, ten years in the future to see how much more I get from it. And now that I know the basic outline of this story, I want to go back and look at these themes some more. There's just so much going on there. I gave this a strong four stars. If you like literary fiction, if you're okay reading about some of the tragedies of war, although I do say most of them are out of remove. We're hearing about them secondhand. She's not in the action quite as often. But um, if you want to explore these themes, if you want an overview of the uh, Sri Lankan Civil War and don't know that much about it, it's a wonderful overlook at basically the whole thing. And yes, I very enjoyed it. I got a lot from it. The next book I read has been sitting on my e-reader for quite a while, but I'm doing this Shop Your Shelves bingo challenge set up by Suzanne over 11 panels. I'll have a link to it down below if you're interested. And it's becoming a quarterly thing, which is a lot of fun, great prompts. And I was just like, you know, hey, I've been meaning to read this. Why not read it? It's Black Queer Ho by Brittany Black Rose Capri. I think this is her only full-length collection as well as her most recent publication, which is kind of a shame because I love these poems so much. It's not the kind of poetry where you have to turn on your brain and, you know, think about alliteration and all these things you learned in high school about how to, like, deconstruct a poem. No, she's going completely on feelings and fire and hope and just so many different feelings right in there. The poems feel like they should be performed. They're meant to be said aloud. And um, I was able to find only a couple of examples of her performing her work 
so good. She is, just as the title says, black. She's queer, she's pansexual, and she calls herself a hoe because she has lots of sex with lots of people and it doesn't feel any bad kind of bad way about it. The voice is strong and she is here to proclaim herself, to talk about some of her life experiences, to yell at people who very much deserve getting yelled at. There's an entire poem that's all about microaggressions. It's one of those things like, I don't see, there was nothing lacking. There was nothing more I wanted. It had wonderful emotions. Some of the poems made me teary. Some of them made me laugh. Some of them made me angry. Uh, and you get the full sense of her on the page and not a dud in the bunch. D wonderful poetry that I can recommend very highly to the point where it is my first five star read of the year. Cause like I was thinking what could be done to make this collection better and I got nothing. I got nothing. Even adding extra poems would almost take away from it. The length is great, just everything so good. And a book that I actually finished in February, but I'm kind of sneaking in here, is Dance with the Devil by Kit Roca. This is the third book in their Mercenary Librarian series, and I say they because it's a two-person author team writing as Kit Roca. And as a third in a series, I can't, there are some things I can't say too much about, like this overarching plot line, but it takes place in a dystopic, well, post-apocalyptic Atlanta, where there were solar flares maybe 20 or 30 years ago that fried a lot of the infrastructure. The U.S. government crumbled and in its place corporations in some parts of the country ended up coming up and ruling everything and that's what happened in the American South and so we have these people that are just trying to get by and do what they need to do to survive um, and some of them have been genetically modified or gone through all kinds of surgery some of them to make them super soldiers other ones to give them um, incredible strength but also incredible smarts to make them that kind of soldier and they end up defecting working together and falling in love along the way and this book might be my favorite of the bunch because everything is coming together. It's this couple that we have seen, um, Raph and Danny, from the first two books. They have so much electric chemistry between them. You know that when they finally touch, the sparks will fly, and oh boy, they totally do. And we're also getting the big bad fight at this entire series in a way has been working up to. We didn't know exactly what it would be, but when you get there, you're like, ah, yes, I, I see what you're doing. This is great. And Roka does such a good job with the fight scenes. They are not, like, people die all over the place, bad guys, everywhere, but it's not explicitly gory. People tend to be killed in clean, neat ways, uh, whether it's, you know, being shot at with lasers from above or, you know, a nice snap of the neck, things that don't get overly gross. And I appreciate that. Like in these hard times, that's a little bit easier to read than blood everywhere. The spatial aspects of these complicated fights is also top notch. I am a person where when I'm reading a book, I tend to picture the space that's taking place in, in my mind. So, um, you know, I can picture okay, the elevators over there and the rest of the room is over here and then there's windows and that's where they came in, that kind of thing. And it was very easy to place everybody in space and never got confused. It's not like people seem to hop from one side of the room to the other for no reason. Everything just worked. And the themes are so timely. It goes beyond found family and something more like chosen family, where you choose the people that you spend your effort and your love and your time with and um, how wonderful and valuable that is about fighting against amorphous evil and how does one do that and rebuild democracy in the end in a place where it had been crushed completely decades earlier. Loved this last book. This was another four star read and yeah, it kind of makes me want to go back to the beginning and reread the series because I read each book pretty much as it came out, except for this last one where I'm a bit behind. So there was spaces. I think it would be a great binge read. I'm also just started their original series in this world called the Beyond series. I need to read more of that. Um, just, yeah, just, mm -hmm. I've gone incoherent, but yeah, really good. So that's what I read. Let's have a look at what I'm currently reading, which at the moment is basically my booktube prize reading. I started my first book and whew, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. And it's not a good book for reading on the train. It's not a good book for reading on the way to work. Um, I was also reading Brotherless Night a lot in my commute and that wasn't good either because somebody would always die. <laughs> right before I like got to work and stuff. Just not, not great. Um, and this is also just not a good book. 
for out and about. It's a book to be read at home and most I don't have a lot of reading time at home right now so just trying to chip away at that. I have some arcs I would really like to get to including Bitter Medicine which um, I actually picked up a while ago. The book isn't out yet though and just want to I started it and really liked it and then put it down for some reason. I just want to get back to it. And I'm going to be doing the first buddy read that I've done in a really long time with Rachel over at Kalanadi. We will be reading the next book in the Foreigner series by CJ Cherry. We are up to book number 13 which I think is Intruder I think and yeah it's a I'm so looking forward to getting back into this world that I know so well with these characters that I love and it's going to feel like going home and along the way talking about all of it with Rachel. It's going to be great. I almost forgot. I'm also chipping through a Masada Miri book called uh, Nakimushi Chieko-san which means like crybaby Chieko and it's a book that is easy to read because it's all it was like serialized in a magazine I think and they're manga panels so it's very easy to read like I think five pages four or five pages at a time and then put it down and come back to it I don't know if I'm saying I want to up my Japanese reading but I want to keep it going and keep that input going um, just to keep my brain in that mode. So that ended up being a bit longer than I originally thought. I was like this is gonna be super short and it only ended up maybe kind of short. I don't know but if you'd like to talk about any of these books, if you've read them, if you would like to read them, anything at all let me know down in the comments below and remember to hit like and to subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next video. Bye!